Welcome to Biz Alchemy, a podcast about creating a new business paradigm by women for women. I'm your alchemical host, Jacqueline Atkins, and I'm going to take you on an extraordinary adventure to create a business filled with ease, fun, spaciousness, and abundance. Hustle, be gone. Let's birth a new way. I have a fabulous guest for you today, but before I get into introducing Leah Kent, I realize there's something I've been forgetting to mention on here, and this is that my in-person event, which I'm calling the Biz Priestess Retreat on Sunday, the 25th of September, has only four places left. And the early bird for the retreat finishes on the 31st of August. So if you would love to come and hang out with me for a day in Byron Bay and only pay 295 Aussie dollars for that, we're going to have six hours together talking, sharing, meditating. Uh, Oh my gosh, we're doing everything. Um, There will be sound healing. (laughs) There will be readings, individual readings done. We'll be doing group readings. We'll be talking your soul journey. We will be talking your business and business energy. We will be doing tons of work on receiving, like just everything. I'm just throwing everything at it. (laughs) It is going to be so much fun. So six ladies have already committed. So if you would like to be one of those remaining four, If you get in by August 31st, you save yourself $100. You'll just pay $295. So if you are interested, go to my website, JacquelineAtkins.com and click on the contact and just send me an email and say, yes, please. Or you can ask for a bit more information, although I've probably given you most of it just there, uh, because true to my work, I will actually be tuning into the energy on the day. And even though I might have an outline of of what we're doing, uh, I will be actually, you know, just making it up as I go along, Um, depending on the reading, the energy reading of the group, because that's that's how I like to work. So, um, oh, and I forgot to mention, it also includes lunch at a local Mullumbimby cafe. So, I'd love to have you join me if this is something that you can do and you're in my part of the world, please do come along. Now, if there's someone I would love to have join my retreat, if they weren't so far away, it would be writer, book coach and book designer, Leah Kent. Leah is my guest for this week's podcast and is the first guest that I've had on my podcast who's not a client of mine. So special, Leah. But when she got in touch and I checked out her website, I was so inspired by what she offers her clients, so much so that I wanted to be one. And her website radiated so much of my philosophy regarding the new business paradigm and finding your true voice to attract clients that I knew I wanted to chat with her and I knew that you would benefit from her wisdom. So as a bonus, she even talks about the moon cycles and that really got me. That was the clincher for me. (laughs) So from idea to finished book, Leah supports heart-centered creatives, experts and entrepreneurs to write and self-publish non-fiction books that clarify their message, establish their thought leadership and expand their impact and visibility. I know you'll love listening to this chat with a literary witch of wonder, as her clients have called her as much as I enjoyed having it. It certainly inspired me to finally start that book that's inside of me. I've been aware of it for a while and I bet you'll also be reaching for the pen by the end of this chat. Leah, was there a turning point when you realised that you had to move away from the patriarchal model of business and create a new paradigm for your business? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, It was, you know leaving corporate, I'd had a business on the side of corporate and I had a complete, I'm going to, I'm just going to call it an awakening. Cause that's really what it was. A complete like expansion of intuition, a deepening of my sort of spiritual life and spiritual connection. And that is when things just really opened up and I, it was not easy. Right. I just want to say for those who are doing this, there's a lot of resistance to that. Um, and you know, what they say in the sort of spiritual community about like 
keeping yourself in the broom closet, right? So I think it took a while, but like there was so much inner work happening. Um, but I had been really steeped in a lot of like logical, linear, academic, do it right um, mentalities. And, you know, it was just this like sort of a wake up call. And I think I also shared with you, it definitely was deepened by motherhood, you know, which is ironic because I have boys. So in some ways, raising boys really sh like seemed to sort of put a spotlight on how important it was to show them a different way and to model a really healthy, equal, balanced way of doing life and doing business and relationships. So that's my like, you know, I'm a writer, I like to talk. So that's my winding road of when I realized I was gonna have to do this a different way. I wasn't gonna just like do a cookie cutter business. This was gonna happen in a really organic, intuitive way. So you went into creating your own business quite consciously. I have known from the time I was young that I was destined to be an entrepreneur. I was like painting wooden animal figures and selling them to my mom's friends when I was like eight. <laughs> so the writing has been on the wall. And honestly, it did take some time to sort of feel my way into like a really right place for my mix of interests and passions and talents um so now you know that journey being like oh my gosh this is it I'm a book coach I'm a book designer this is what I'm here to do it feels amazing so it was funny because I was like business first like entrepreneurship first and then figured out like well what was that going to look like mm, I think that's how many people do it yeah so what was your journey to you know book coach and so, like obviously you didn't go straight into business or did you? As a book coach? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I have a whole long list of the, the website addresses, the email accounts, like as I evolved. So one of my very first ventures that felt really official was teaching children to cook in my local community. And I like rented the space or I probably traded. I don't even know if I paid for the space in the beginning and like found some friends with kids and, and did some cooking. And then I turned that into an online course. And then my friend and I did like a feng shui course online. Um, and then what really got me moving heavily into writing and book coaching, I'm a hundred percent a lifelong writer raised in a very like sort of literary academic family. So after writing my own books, writing a lot of online courses, I realized, oh, this is what it's always been. And I'm going to tell you, Jacqueline, I've literally worked for a publishing company. I've worked in a book bindery, like that hindsight being 2020, the stepping stones were all there. <laughs> so that's some highlights of, of the, the past. Mm, I love that. And it's so fascinating you say that, Leah, because I think so many people will, will see that. Like, even though you might look back, even if I look back on my original career as a physiotherapist, it was healing, you know? So, and I used to always think, because I used to get amazing results with my patients, as we called them, but I used to think I'm not that good a physio, you know, people I work with know more about it than me. And only looking back, I can see now, of course, I was working energetically without knowing I yes. was working energetically, you know, so I was bringing that healing energy through even then. And in, even in that choice of career, it's so true. I love that you've explained it that way. Oh, and the way you just explained it, it's like the gift that you're here to share, like it's always going to find an outlet. Right. And that's that's actually a really reassuring thing, because even now when I work with people, it's like, I don't know if this is it or is this the right book? And I'm like, just just start writing the books like it's going to find its way out, you know. And um, so I just think that's really cool the way that you expressed your journey, too. Like we all have that, like the thing is there. Right. The essence is there and it's going to be part of whatever you're doing. And I hope that some of us can like use that as a way to relax because we can be kind of hard on ourselves. Mm. <laughs> that's another piece of what you just brought up that feels like, oh, let's all relax. Let's just trust a little, you know? Exactly. So I had a look at a blog you'd written and I really love this because it ties in with my work so well. 
You said, in a noisy world of information overload, it's not your information that helps you stand out. It's your voice and point of view. So I talk to that so much in my work. So can you just expand on that? Oh, thank you so much. It feels so cool to hear you read my words. I want to say that. So thank you. Um, and yes, I think so. You know, I help people share their voice and their expertise in a book. And one of the most common thoughts I hear from clients is it's all been said before, right? Or who cares? Or nobody's paying attention. And that self-talk, that voice that silences us before we even try, I think that's what I'm here to like, that's the, the spell I want to break, right? Like, oh my gosh, that's not what this is about. Um, yes, it's been said before. And we could look at that like that's a problem or we could look at that like it's liberating, right? Because it takes all the pressure off. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're just saying what you know to be true. You're giving your take on it. You're, I think actually Denise Duffield Thomas might've said something like, you're just adding your voice to the chorus. You know, it's not about being the only one who says anything. That's actually kind of an uncomfortable place to be. <laughs> like if you mm. look at history, the people who are just like saying something totally contrary, well, that's like a lot of attention. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad or wrong, but we don't all have to play that role. We can also play the role of like joining together and all saying similar things with overlap. And then we can reinforce each other, right? So that's the sort of strength in numbers. Another visual, if it's helpful, that's coming to mind by Martha Beck was like a tower of sugar cubes and you sort of dissolve the bottom. Like you bring everybody together at the bottom and it can crumble like the sort of tower structure. So if you're living in sort of like a, the disproportionateness of, of hierarchy and patriarchy. So if the bottom layers, if the true foundation can really bind together, if we can really find each other, we become so powerful. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got to just share because I've got complete tingles when you said the spell that needs to be broken. Because, and I, I'd love you to dive into this because I know you've got a little bit of a witchy sort of side, haven't you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's bigger than little. Because of this spell and the words, you know, the, that whole idea of spelling, you know, and, mm. and the words. What would you like to add to that? Oh my gosh. Well, I first must give credit because the, the dear Tad Hargrave, who's like a marketing coach, he uses that prompt to help business owners identify like what's really important to them. And so he says, what's the spell you're here to break? Um, so he's like a like-minded, awesome guy. Uh, so I want to give him credit because I got that from him, but it resonates, right? Like that is such a powerful thing um, that is out there. Like that's for everybody, right? Like we're not here to be gatekeepers. Let's, um, let's share that. Let's all think about the spells we're here to break. So I can tell you that when I heard that question, it, it like lit something up inside of me. I think it's such a potent question. So if you have a business and you are wondering like, why does this matter or what's so important? That question, what's the spell you're here to break? If we can all be with that, it can unlock some really juicy, meaningful, um, just like richness for ourselves. So when I read that and considered what that meant to me in my life and my business, I'm just like, I am here to break the spell of self-silencing. You know, I think the biggest thing that is so important to me is that we, we claim our space and our voice, right? Like, so permission to take up space. And so the spell we live under is like, we don't deserve to take up space. We have to be small. We have to fit in. And that one, oh my gosh, that's a huge one for me that you're allowed to take up space. We want you to take up space. Like we, we want that. The world needs it. Oh my gosh, the world needs it. Honestly, I feel like I could, I probably have like a hundred of them. Not really. There's about three to five really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm here to break, but I want to offer it back to everybody who's listening to say like, what is that for you? Cause it's such a great question. Yeah. It's a brilliant question. I can't wait to tackle that one. Yeah. And, and so that leads beautifully into journaling. Mm. 
how do you incorporate journaling and or certainly let's talk you know my our listeners are female entrepreneurs and I'm sure they've all heard about journaling or maybe some do journaling give us a Leah Kent approach to journaling and uh, why you recommend it oh my gosh absolutely yeah you know it's so I obviously listen to a lot of conversations about writing and we all have our experience with the word journaling. Um, I love it and I know what it means to me. And I would say over the years, it has evolved into a feeling of intuitive writing, which is a little bit more nuanced than journaling, which can sometimes be associated with like a diary or like a log. So for me, the journaling lives over in the in the realm of um, like specifically free writing, writing without stopping. Um, and then I call it intuitive writing because it to me is a grounding exercise that helps me to hear myself. So when I talk about journaling, I talk about being in a relationship with my inner voice of wisdom or being in a really um, healthy dynamic with my sort of just like my soul it's very soulful. It's very spiritual. Um, but it's a, it's a time for hearing myself think. So I slow down. Um, I do bring some sort of energetic ritual to it whenever I can. Um, I like to take my, my writing and my journaling sessions out into the world. I just think that's really powerful to change your context when you're writing because it brings you into different part of yourself, which can then come out onto the page. My goal in writing is to get into a flow state where there's very little inner resistance and that me and the voice and the pen and the paper are just like really all interconnected. Um, so there's a meditation quality there too. You know, this is almost like writing meditation. Um, so that's what that looks like and feels like. And I can be more specific if I've missed something, but that's what I, I just write. And with that intention of being in touch with something that's really at my center. Mm, I love that. And that is a brilliant suggestion, Leah, about changing your location to do it, changing your external environment. Like, of course, the whole energy changes then, doesn't it? It's amazing. I love that. I love that. And then that made me think of the Facebook post that you'd shared with me that I read that was just like my whole heart just opened up and went, oh my God, this is my woman because this is just how I think. Where you talked about sustained spirituality, mm -hmm. when your spiritual practice is deeply rooted in place, earth, and respect for the living world. And I, every part of me just melted when I read that. <laughs> and so even if you talk about that journaling now or, you know, that uh, however you want to view it, but taking it out into an environment where you are in that um, space. <gasps> oh my gosh. Well, if I can share. So our family last year, as part of our response to the pandemic, we purchased um, a, a piece of forest. We purchased 17 acres. I don't know what that I don't know if you use acres in Australia, but okay. So 17 acres, you have a sense of it. It's like a nice little chunk. And um, I wrote that post that you're talking about after having spent some time there on the land. And it is like, I'm going to be writing about this place and writing in that place for decades to come. But the sense of everything I need is right here in the forest. Like I don't need to go anywhere or do anything. Like I don't need a lot of accessories or accoutrements. Like I don't need an altar because there are these incredible granite boulders. You know, I don't need something to build an altar with because my children are like finding hawk feathers and we're finding like beautiful leaves and ferns and just like I was just like, this is it. Like it's, this is literally it. You don't need more than this. And it's so pure. It's so connected. There's no filter. It's just, it's just so pure. It's so nourishing. It is, it is. And I think many of us have reconnected to nature and reconnected to ourselves as being part of nature as a result of the last couple of years, I think it's really led us home in that way. And we're not wanting to give that up now. 
mm-hmm. even though things might have changed. It's like, no, I want to maintain that connection. And actually, as we're talking about nature, of course, it's time to talk about the moon. Ooh. I really, really am fascinated with your work, with the cycles of the moon. And I know that many of my tribe are always wanting to know more about how they can use the energies of the moon and the cycles of the moon as part of the way that they are showing up in business. You know, this is a yes. part of the new business paradigm. So over to you, Leah. Yes, over yes. You tell me, <laughs> share about your work with the moon, your moon rituals. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really a lot of where it started too, is that sort of living into a cyclical rhythm in life and business. That's absolutely like a foundational cornerstone. And then I went ahead and wrote a book about my moon rituals. So you can find Intuitive Moon Rituals by Leah Kent on pretty much any bookstore, I think, um, online. And I, the thing that's unique or the thing that I believe in really strongly and I, I'm sure I'm not alone, is that it's not about doing things the way somebody else tells you to do. So my my moon ritual book is not like, this is what to do and when to do it. My intention with it is for you to find your own connection. So living in cycles and living in seasons, it's literally like who we are. It's It's just part of the human experience is to be on cycles, right? Like we're on a daily cycle, our sleep cycle, we are governed by, by cycles. Um, so the moon is this external mirror and reflection that we have access to, to keep us in, in that place and to remind us. Right. And especially of course, as women, um, because our bodies have a natural uh, connection to those same moon cycles. I mean, all human bodies do in terms of like the ebb and flow of water in our bodies, but specifically women in our cycles and and what have you. So for me, when it comes to creativity, I don't like prescriptions. I like invitations. So my invitation is always start tracking the moon cycle and seeing where that lines up with your unique energy. So I might find the new moon is great for starting projects, but you might find something different. You might find that you need to rest on the new moon and vice versa. And I think that's what I want to say really in my work with the moon cycles is like, you have to find your own way with it. Um, And so, yeah. So in the intuitive moon rituals book, there are prompts and ritual invitations and you can totally use them for your business. I use them all the time. And I just did a ritual before I got on the phone with you. Like I literally just did one. Um, So I just think that like, you can't separate this stuff from showing up in your business. And it's another form of support. I think if to sum up, there's so much support available. And like we're talking about, literally just the moon cycle is a great reminder. It's a great um, structure that we can lean into, but not in a specific way, but in a unique find your own connection way. Yes, yes. And the idea that the support is there in the natural world as well. And this is, you know, talking about bringing more yin energy into um, how we show up in our business. Mm. We do it through this connection with the natural world and honoring what is around us, honoring honoring the cycles. And it's like we have to remember this because we have been disconnected. I by design, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And so it's a remembering of this and how vital this is for us to uh, show up at our best, really at our best expression in our business. And so going back into your writing, you know, your purpose, your business, that's supporting that as well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and remembering is a great word, right? Because like, it's part of bringing yourself back into a wholeness. And then the other word that I like to use for that same thing you're talking about is reclaiming, right? Because it's almost like this belongs to us, right? We belong to the earth, the earth, like we are in relationship. And so it's like reclaiming a healthy relationship and, um, and like tying it back together where I agree with you. I think it's been intentionally severed. And I think that's a lot of the work for entrepreneurs right now and women and conscious leaders and heart-centered entrepreneurs, we are trying to tie that back together 
Um, another image that I find helpful is like that there's a tapestry and there are these parts that have grown quite shabby and thin. And like some of our work is this reweaving and is this re reparation of the tapestry to bring it back into integrity and wholeness. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, sh I should be a writer, Jacqueline. I should write that down. I think you should. Are you, is your business ready to take another little turn? Okay, let's come back to the writing. Okay, Leah, so let's, let's do a little example here, a little role play. Leah, I work with the energy body of the business and business chakras, and I want to write a book about that. How can you help me? Oh, my gosh. I can help you in so many ways. You know, I want to tell you one way that I can help which is I am outstanding at holding space for you to get present to what you've already created on that topic to help you then feel your way into a book vision and a book concept that is rooted in the present. And it will feel like it's right there, ready to be expressed. And it won't feel like it's far outside of you it won't feel like something that you're having to like stretch uncomfortably for, reach for, or grasp for. I will help you find the book based on that topic that's right there already within you and that is ready to come and be expressed and brought into form. That's what I love doing. That's what I'm good at. It's so interesting because, yes, that would be the barrier that comes up, I'm sure, for so many you know, I'll talk female entrepreneurs because that's sort of who we're talking with today, but isn't it that it's almost like it's just too hard. It just feels too hard. And and then a part of that becomes the story about, oh, there's not enough time to do that. And, mm. you know, all, all of those stories. And it's almost like what you've just said there is the bridge over that. Yes. Yeah. The other thing that I usually offer is what do you think it means to write a book that feels heavy and like too much pressure? Like, what are your beliefs about what counts as a book? Who's qualified to write a book? And we often have to do some excavation around that. And when we can do that excavation and just like tease that apart and untangle some of that um, resistance and stress and anxiety around it, then we can get into a clear space to be like, ah, okay, great. So now from here, with all, without all those tangled um thoughts now what wants to come through yes wow now one more question I've got here yeah. well actually it's a statement that when we had our little chat before we recorded the podcast something I had taken note of is you had said alchemy is part of the creative cycle of expression mm. yeah what did you mean by that oh my goodness well when you are doing this work of bringing a book into the world and articulating like what you care about and uh, what you're here to share, like the wisdom you're here to express, the process of articulating and clarifying that it works you. It, you put yourself through a process of alchemy, of transformation. And so where you come out the other end. And this happens reliably and consistently with these amazing clients that I get to work with. When they're done and the book is written, they basically are beaming. They're like, I actually do know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm saying. I'm good at this. Like it gets them in touch with their voice, with their confidence, uh, so that's the alchemy of the creative expression is that you begin to actually know yourself to be somebody in a, just a deeper way. You know yourself as somebody who has like real wisdom to share. So that's, that's what I mean by that process. And it is absolutely magnificent. Mm, wow. So is there anything else that you feel like you'd like to share with uh, our audience before we finish? I think you know, what I, what I want to say to anybody who's listening to this and thinking, oh my gosh, I do want to write a book. I just want to say, then do it. You can, you can to say, this is so possible for you. Um, I think what's helpful 
is to bring this really into tangible form for people. And I, so to be a little bit practical and say, you know, you can write a book, the barrier before was getting it published and into the hands of the reader. But we live in a magical time where that's never been easier. And so I think that the, the soulful, heart-centered healers, wise women, like let's take advantage of that, right? So, hey, it's so easy to get our ideas out there. I hear women be resistant to sort of interacting with big companies that run publishing. And I'm like, hey, let's use it. You know, let's use those tools for good you know, wield them for sharing ideas of like, trust yourself, you know, be, be a wise and wealthy woman, be a good ancestor. Like let's use those tools to get those messages out into the hands of more and more people. So I think what I want to say is like, there's never, there's never been a time where you could so easily get your book out into the world. And I think that we should embrace that wholeheartedly. Mm. It really is a claiming of your voice, isn't it? A claiming of your truth. Yes. 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 And your and your power and your connection to everybody else. A book is a conversation that happens across time and space. Right. So if you write the book, then I get to basically be in a conversation with you six months from now, six years from now, you know, there's this legacy piece. There's this life's work piece where your book can amplify through space and time in a way that can be more potent and more unexpected than the smaller circle of just like only talking to a few people in your living room, which is wonderful. I have, we need to do that also, but there's something about the portal of the book. There's something about that form that is meaningful and remains meaningful, even in a hyper-connected digital world, the book form hasn't stopped being really special. So that's part of it too. Oh, you've got me all excited, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my secret sauce. I don't, I don't, if I haven't convinced you that you're ready to write a book, I haven't done my job. <laughs> With anyone, that, with anyone that I meet, um, I know I could literally, well, this is, this is when, you know, right. If you're like, I could talk about this literally all day, every day for years, then that's a good sign. So if you're having that feeling about your topic and your business, then you're in the perfect place. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So where can people find out more about you and your work, Leah? My online presence. I'm on Instagram more and more. And that's Leah Cherry Kent. Cherry is my maiden name. And same thing with my website, leahcherrykent.com. And one of the things I offer just as a free resource is a a step-by-step of the self-publishing process. So you can really follow along and, and see what it really takes. And I try to make everything feel accessible and easy because everything is doable. Just one foot in front of the other. And I'm friendly. So like reach out, say hello. I'm very accessible. (laughs) <laughs> and so aligned with my business. That's And that's what really drew me to you was so much of, you know, whether it was the moon or the writing or the finding your authentic mm. voice, it's so, so aligned so beautifully with what I share with my audience. That's why I really wanted to have you on and chatting. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Oh, you are amazing, Jacqueline. And I, I just think that the space that you hold for people and what you stand for is just, yeah, we all need each other. So I feel the exact same way. It just was like, Ooh, so drawn. And we follow those intuitions. And I just think that being in the business of alchemy and transforming how we show up and how we do things like, Oh, it's so essential. Yeah, exactly. Thanks Leah. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Biz Alchemy. I'm Jacqueline Atkins. If you'd love to know more about the energy of business, join my newsletter list at JacquelineAtkins.com and check out my receiving channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Jacqueline Atkins. Until next time, enjoy creating alchemy in your biz.